Hey everybody, my name is Paul Ovens. Welcome to episode one of Becoming Influential, the chat show for modern marketers. I'll be hosting this episode alongside the amazing Alice Nichols, who we've just been chatting with in prep. And our special guests for today are Tracy McMahon and Zainab Bakan. Welcome, ladies. Cannot wait to hear from you and all of your amazing insights. Today, we're going to be talking about modern network marketing in the current climate, like what's going on right now. So let's dive in. Alice. All right. So we're getting straight into it today. And I'm going to be speaking with Zainab just for now. So Zainab, I understand that something you do really well is bring community together and create collaborations with other professionals. So if you could share with us what that looks like and why, why you feel it's so powerful, and then give us some examples of what the responses have been like um, within your team. And I know I've seen that you have people like holistic dentists, naturopaths, and all sorts of other things that you're kind of gathering in to share their experience with your team. So what does that look like? Hi, thanks for having me on. So basically, um, for me, it's about creating those real relationships with not only my customers, but the wider team, but also the wider non doTERRA community. Um, and I found by collaborating with these guests, it's just um, opening up a world to different expertise um, in our community. Um, so initially, I started off to reach out to the uh, to our current customers who I could see had a passion for health and wellness, or they were already a naturopath or a health coach, and I would just message them and say, you know, I love what you're doing. Would you be interested in doing a Zoom for our DoTerra customers? Um, and eventually, that that idea kind of ran dry because I didn't have anyone else that I could approach. So. I then decided that, okay, well, I'm helping our customers. Why don't I do this for our business builders? So I, same thing, reached out to um, people online that were like mindset coaches, social media training, time management. And then in between, I ran my own trainings as well. I just felt the pull to basically educate my own team, um, but also that wider community, especially because I am building online at the moment. Um, and I wanted to really continue to like cultivate those relationships and connections um, in lockdown for the past two years, but also provide that free ongoing um, value. Um, to everyone basically around me. So you asked me um, in regards to what does that mean? But I feel like I wasn't just randomly approaching people. Like it's not like I go and suss out and go, oh, who can I approach? It's the people that I've been messaging, I've created some form of meaningful relationship already. So we've got a connection. We've been, you know, DMing or, you know, I love the value or content that they're providing and I've shared it or there's some sort of, form of connection and so when I approach them I've never had anyone say no or ignore me it's always been that's a great idea because you know it benefits them it benefits um, you know myself and my community and it's also you know I'm not an expert in everything so why not outsource where I can. That's so fantastic. Just on that as well, when you mentioned that, um, you know, they're not people that you're just kind of cold contacting, are your first initial meetings with the people that you're having on to educate and be more trusted advisors in their field with your team and community, are these people that you've met in a personal sense to create and formed a relationship with? I know in referral marketing, we kind of say you're the sum of your network type of thing, or is it a mix of different spaces? Um, Basically, because all of this has happened in the last two years, um, I haven't met any of them personally at all. So it's literally been social media um, and specifically Instagram. So, um, you know, it's because I follow them for the value that they're providing and, you know, they're helping me with, you know, whatever it is. So if it's a naturopath, like we've had osteopaths, we've had chiros, nutritionists, so things that I resonate with as well. And I think, well, if I resonate with them, I know that my, you know, wider team's going to, um, you know, value as well. So it's, yeah, haven't even had the chance to create those one-on-one -on -one relationships yet. So I can't imagine how different that would be. Uh, but it goes to show anything's possible, even online. Mm, I love that. Thank you. 
I love that too, you know, um, not having even met any of them yet. So cool because, you know, you're creating these relationships, you're leveraging these relationships and connections, you're creating community and, and haven't, uh, haven't even seen them face to face yet. So, so cool. Uh, Tracy, I understand you're doing some of, kind of something similar when it comes to this as well. Tell us how this happens for you and your business. I, can we just start? I just want to stop everything for just one moment because what got me to here I want to just honour these little brown bottles and I want to honour Mother Nature for a moment. Can we just all say a hurrah for Mother Nature and doTERRA? Uh, Because this is what's led me to this point. And I just wanted to really like, can we just open the space with them, please? Beautiful. Um, What, because that's what's led me to this building of community and building that understanding more of who I am and more of what I actually bring and understanding that I don't have to be everything to everybody and to realize that to build a community if we can draw on each other's magic then we get to create the whole the whole presence of being in a community and I think that it's given me such rich relationships in my life and in my business because of this collaboration with others and it's taught me valuable um, skills and lessons that I would never have done had I have just tried to do it all by myself. So this reaching out to other people and inviting them into my world has been such a great space because I've also been invited to other people's worlds. Mm. I think yeah. it's very it's very powerful. And, and what it does for my clients in particular is it gives them other areas and other other aspects of their healing or their their work or whatever it is that I am I'm with them for it gives them other people that they can see for that as well that's really powerful and um, that through line of that community connection and Zainab was talking about this specifically being online which what I love about that is it's not about what you do it's about how you do it with the market in the space it is now but yours is more of a face-to-face or more of a an IRL in real life scenario is that right yeah I mainly like I do have a a small social media presence but I am very connected like with people one-on-one in groups getting together being in community it's very important for me Mm. yeah that's so great okay and so Zainab, you've clearly found a way for yourself in this business model Um, and I'm sure that over the last two years and kudos to you being in Melbourne as well. I know know, I've still got the majority of my team there as well and I understand that it it has been uh, really interesting at times and I know within any business, this is not just doTERRA, this is not just referral or network marketing, but if we are going to create any business for ourselves, there's going to be times where we are needing to up level along the way. And I think anytime I find myself saying the words, this is simple, this is easy, this is fun. This is simple, this is easy, this is fun. It's when I'm actually faced with uh, something I have to dig deep to go through. So um, what areas have you you yourself found that you have to kind of find that grit or that courage to go through? And uh, what have you been able to do to, to create flow in those areas over the last couple of years? Um, I definitely think, look, the last two years being in Melbourne, it definitely has been extremely challenging. Three kids at home, remote learning, all of that. But put all that aside, I had to really understand what my purpose was. And I had to really like lean into knowing and truly believing that I can help make changes in people's lives and with health and wellness, but also with business as well. So in terms of like digging deep, I had to really like cultivate and understand and connect with that belief that this is my business and what I'm doing is, you know, making changes in my community, in the wider community and, you know, hopefully the world, but that this is bigger than me and it's bigger than the challenges that, you know, I'm facing and everyone faces their own challenges. So I just feel like I had to really understand that, hey, I am this vessel that, you know, can pass along this knowledge um, and, you know, understand that it's really like it to me, it's a huge blessing and I'm so grateful that I can really lean into that. Um, And I think the biggest one 
is also comparison. Like I definitely feel like I've been there um, with, you know, comparing myself to others, comparing myself to, you know, leaders or network marketers in general, not really knowing where I stand or my own self-worth. So I had to really clear my own, you know, mind um, with understanding with that headspace that, you know, I'm worthy for this and that, and that I can achieve it. And just to believe in myself and not worry about what anyone else is doing. Um, and the more I was in alignment with that, then I was able to create that change and really move forward. Um, and just reminding myself that just, you know, stay true to yourself, focus on your own core values. Um, and, you know, that it's, it all comes down to serving. Like if I understand and really believe that I am serving the community um, and it's not just about sales or, you know, a couple of oils here and there. Um, it's about creating that connection, nurturing those relationships with my customers, my builders, and really seeing where that vision is. Like I had to be really open and vulnerable with myself, um, with my team, um, and just really like, I think becoming a leader, so many layers of things come out that I didn't know existed. Um, so I think before anything business related, it all comes down to ourselves as leaders um, and what we want to achieve really. Um, and I think once I believed in myself, then all the other things can fall into place like goals and systems and automation and things like that. Um, you can have all that. You can have a pretty website. You can have photos and everything and an amazing social media presence. But if it's not converting to customers and retaining um, customers, you know, with LRP and connection and relationships, it kind of means nothing. Mm. Um, so that all kind of came about during lockdown. Um, and so, and just to... Um, put a bit of emphasis on that it sounds like that what you experienced was when there's times of comparisonitis or when there's, there's times that you're you're you know feeling like you have to dig deep it's not that you simply say to yourself self I believe in myself and then bang it happens once and you've done that work and then forevermore you always believe in yourself it sounds like that's a continuous process that you go through and it's something that's never ending I would imagine is that the case yeah definitely so I feel like there's, you know, different struggles along the way and it's really just pinpointing what's the priority and where you need to focus. And then, you know, other challenges are always going to arise and just, you know, just dealing with it and it is what it is, just deal with it and um, try and focus on how to move forward with it. Yeah. Thank you. I'm keen to get Tracy's thoughts on something, but um, Zainab, something you just raised that really... Um, just stuck out to me there you talked about value system knowing your own values knowing your own value system and I'm, I think that's something that um, a lot of us are divorced from that we, we haven't really spent time finding out what is that for ourselves our value system and of course then how that plays into your own self-belief and um, Alice has touched on yes self-belief is something that kind of there's levels of it probably and we kind of got to keep keep going back to that well and keep uh, keep digging into that and find that new level of self-belief for the new level of, of us, you know, the next better version of ourselves that comes along. But um, how did you happen upon, how do you kind of know what your value system is, number one, and then how do you feel that that plays into you having such a strong sense of self so that you can be authentically you in the way that you show up in everything that you're doing in this business? Because I think um, it's, it's what makes us different and what makes us stand out is is where the, the the killer content comes from and the attraction level just goes through the roof yeah i think it's always just thinking really deeply and understanding that you know not only am i representing myself my faith i'm representing doTERRA as well like that is it all interwines together um and so you know understanding that you know, the way that I show up, the way that I speak, the way that I show up as a mom, as a wife, as a friend, as a leader, it just, it all comes into play. And so knowing that if I stay true to myself, then I don't need to be anyone else and that I will never be anyone else. I just need to be me. And I, if I be myself and I stay true and I be authentic, 
um, then I will attract those that will understand where I'm coming from um, and that, you know, resonate. If we all resonate with different people. So not everyone's going to like me, not everyone's going to resonate with me and that's okay. So as long as I know that, you know, I'm being honest, I'm being transparent and I am, you know, really sharing the doTERRA business opportunity, but also the oils, which is the main part of it all that I, I genuinely love the oils I genuinely use them and showing that it's not just a one Instagram story or you know randomly just to show people it's actually part of my life like I live and breathe the products um, and people see through things that are fake and so if you really show up in an authentic way then you will attract the same um, customers as well yeah awesome awesome and Tracy, in chatting to you recently, um, I know that you found a way to pair your passions with these products and it's really working for you. That's, you know, been an absolute game changer in, in you being able to grow your business. Tell us about how you've been able to succeed, especially when so many people out there think it has to be either or. The passions I already have or no terror or mm. I don't have time on top of my job or my life or my kids or my husband or my, what, my whatever. Mm, I love that. And, and can I just speak to Zainab? I feel like, are we like sisters from another life? Like, <laughs> I, I actually felt like, oh, goodness gracious, is that actually coming out of my mouth? Uh, yeah, I so resonate with everything you just said, my friend. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, Paul, in answer to your question, um, I have this saying that I say to, say to people and it's be you and add oils. And, and in the being of you, actually just be you. So whether you've just started, you've just, you know, picked up your first oil, maybe you haven't even purchased them yet, or whether you've been here for 20 years, if that's not even possible. But I, I really feel like the penny dropped for me when I realised that I didn't have to be what I thought doTERRA looked like. So for me, when I started five years ago, um, I looked like a black sheep of the family. Like I just did not look like <laughs> the other women that were there. And, um, and so I, I, I seriously doubted myself. But then, Zainab, you said the words perfectly. And I remember saying it over and over again, it's bigger than me. Like this is so much bigger than me. And so what I'd like to say to this question is, whatever it is that you're passionate about and whether that's being kind, like you don't need to have some Mother Teresa reason to be on the planet. Like our planet right now needs a lot of kindness. So if your stroke of genius is that you're kind, then be that and, and add oils and you watch what happens. Because when I was trying so hard to scurry to be Oh, do I need to do it like that? Or, oh, that person's, oh, should I, is that the way I should do it? I was reading the manuals. I was watching the YouTube videos. I was going to every possible training. And when I actually recognized that, hang on a minute, <laughs> I am a hairdresser that sits and people like, let me know of all the stuff that they're going through. And so I can be a hairdresser and go, here you go, babe. You're grieving. Let's, let's share a drop of easy air together and let's just breathe. And then when I do my healing work and somebody feels like they have no worth, lesson love, let's get some bergamot and let's just inhale that. And so I'm doing, I'm being me and I'm adding oils. And I think that this is when, this is when the game changed because also what I found for myself when I did this was I resonated with this business more. Because what was happening for me is I was getting quite frustrated, <laughs> quite, uh, quite disturbed and to the point where I actually like really pulled back from it because I felt like I was being somebody that I wasn't. And who I am, all I want to do is build relationships with people and I want them to feel safe and I want them to feel seen and I want them to feel loved and I want them to be able to have the tools that they need to support them to be the best version of themselves. And so if that's what I love, well, the oils are a no-brainer. It's like 
mother just comes with me and we do the work together. So I hope that that answered your question, Paul. That was a bit longer than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, look, yeah, that's what we want, the authentic you. Thanks so much for sharing that. That was beautiful. Um, one thing, just before I think Al wants to ask something too, but um, you talked about being you and add oils, right? Um, and I think that's a statement that is so powerful and uh, everyone is going to resonate with, you know, absolutely with that. And I'm also acutely aware that being you in the face of so much judgment and, uh, you know, around that exists around the world is actually a really tough thing to do. So how is it that you have been able to find the strength to be able to be you in the face mm. of all of that? Oh, I love that question. <laughs> I love it. I love it because I have been stretched further <laughs> in this business. I'm about to turn 52 in a couple of weeks. And I have to say the five years that I have spent with doTERRA have been the biggest stretch of my life. Uh, <laughs> I have been challenged. Oh, my goodness, have I been challenged. But I feel like I found myself in that challenge. And it's like I, I always let my clients know, you know, the lotus comes up through the mud. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's such a beautiful thing. And the thing that I recognize now is um, if I go into my darkness, oh, I completely, I sit there and I go, oh, this is going to be fun because as dark as I can get, I will be catapulted to light. And so using these oils, allowing myself to go through the process like I was always such an alpha female. I did it all myself. Nobody could help me. I don't need your help. Go away. I don't want your network marketing. I hate network marketing. I don't want anything to do with it. I was so staunch and so stubborn. But what I've recognized is that I have found the beauty in my stubbornness. And I have like what I recognize now is emotion is energy in motion. And until I met these oils in this amazing company, I had so much energy running through me, but I had nowhere to direct it, nowhere to really focus it. And so first of all, I obviously, like a lot of women do, we buy the oils for everybody else. <laughs> I bought them for my Reiki clients so that they wouldn't rely on me and be so um, dependent upon me. And in the process, I found myself. And so that was such a gift. And it was such a surprise gift because I didn't go out seeking it. I thought I had all everything together. I thought I was, you know, I was nailing life as the woman that I was. But the woman that I'm becoming, oh, I am so falling in love with her. She's, she's making an impact in the world. And I, I love it. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing that. I really, um, one of the things that, that, that bit there, I was thinking to myself after you had mentioned that you'd looked at other people and thought maybe you needed to be a cookie cutter version and you felt a little bit uh, tense because you didn't feel like that person. And I do, I, you know, I have seen myself um, many times that when others get focused on looking to the person they think they need to be that cookie cutter version, it simply means that they are not in any type of flow themselves. So instead they witness that person achieve the goals that they might want to achieve while they're rigid and kind of, and, and kind of stuck. But within that, and which I think you articulated that you found in flow, you get to try on different hats and a lot of people don't feel like they know what their passion is now or don't feel like they understand who that that person is that authentic self like there would be a lot of women and perhaps men here on this call or listening afterwards who are like but I don't know who that is mm -hmm. and I simply think you can't actually find that until you are moving you don't find it until you're you're in motion and the hat may change color and it might add bells or it might add something different or maybe it becomes super minimalist, but that to be in motion is where you're actually going to find that. And I, I loved how you expressed that so much. Um, yeah, less cookie cutter is good. So good. Mm. Uh, and, I and love all, both. Well, sorry. No, no, you're right. I was just going to say also is the, the, like, the, the part about the motion is you don't stay as the person you are. 
So if you don't know who you are, keep going because yeah. this version of me today will be completely different in three months' time and six months' time. I think that's where we need to understand it's an evolution of us. We are not stuck. Yeah, mm. I love it. Um, I have uh, a question for both of you, actually. Zainab, I'll start with you, but it's the same question for both of you. Um, this is really important when we think about this business being um, one that offers solutions that can be used daily for years or for our lives. So what avenues do you love to leverage the most that you feel creates raving fans and committed customers for the products that you have? Currently, I have to think about the current season that I'm in. And so that is really focusing on that online space. Um, you know, I've still got my two and a half year old at home with me. Um, you know, he doesn't go to childcare or um, anything. So I basically am fitting around everything around him and obviously his needs as well. So for me, in order to leverage that growth, it is focusing on that online space. So reminding myself to show up um, and, you know, continuously provide that value um, and just be me, let people see me to help build that trust and that relationship. Um, but in terms of our current customers and, you know, the community um, is to, you know, always be there for them too. So I've realised that, you know, um, over the years as you grow, that, you know, enrolling is one thing, but then what's the next step? So, you know, if you're not onboarding them properly, if you're not actually creating those relationships, um, then it just kind of stops. So that's really been something that I've been focusing on with my own growth is that, okay, like your customers enrolled now, it's to actually connect with them. And I feel like I did kind of lose myself um, um, with enrollments is that maybe that's something that is my strength and I can enroll you know a few quite a few people a month but what is the next step like not just seeing it as a number and actually seeing and and really listening in um, to what that customer's needs are and you know seeing that they're more than just that one starter kit so um, once I make those uh, connections and I've created those relationships I feel like everything just flows so much better. And I feel like my job, if I can even say that it's a job, it feels so much more fulfilling. Um, and it just makes me feel like, okay, we're making change and hearing their stories and hearing how well that it's, you know, making those changes in their own homes or with their children um, or their families. It's just, it's that storytelling, like just constantly hearing it. Um, I think, yeah, so that and also, um, for my that continuous education I didn't have anywhere to plug uh, my customers into for that continuous education so I did have to create that vibe myself and so it took a little bit of courage extreme pushing myself outside of my comfort zone um, and it didn't come easy it might look easy but it definitely um, wasn't easy and so showing up for them um, you know, as, as frequently as possible because of that online space. If I pull back, then I feel like everything does still go downhill because it's still not, you know, at that solid level. So um, I think that when I show up on my, uh, for my customers, for my, for my team, and even that wider community, then I know that those connections are being made and it takes a little bit longer compared to in-person. Um, but it still works. It just takes a bit longer. Yeah. That's great. And what about you, Tracy? So from the moment you crack the Bergamo to your community becoming raving fans who need to get everything in their lives or re, re grab the things they love. What's that process look like for you? How do you nurture that? Mm. Uh, I, I, hmm. <sighs> The first part was when I first cracked that burger, <laughs> Relating back to that, to the woman that you spoke I, about. Before. I seriously love this because the first time I opened it, it was like it brought back all my witchy poo moments. And I started thinking, oh my gosh, like this means that I can actually make potions. So it sparked something in me. And then what I did was I just had to share it with as many people as I could possibly lay my hands on. To the point where I was just saying to my clients, what's wrong with you? You must have something wrong with you. 
let's let's play with this like let me find what it is and so it really like it played into that like fun and my you know like my roots basically and then you know like I did that and I really I got to I I I, I catapulted with that because I was so excited and then I took it seriously <laughs> And that's just not me. So it really didn't, it didn't progress. Um, and then I started to go into that whole, oh, this isn't working. It's not moving. I'm stuck. I can't do this. And it wasn't like, seriously, guys, <laughs> it was, uh, it hasn't been fun for the last year or so for me in that state, because I've been really like, what am I doing? Like where, until I remembered that that's not my natural state. It's not my natural state to be um, stressing and being serious and having business meetings and being all, I have to have fun. I have to feel like it's going somewhere, that it's blessing people, that there's, you know, people are being impacted and their lives are being impacted because of what I do. So I, 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 I came back to my heart and I really thought, you know what, I'm going to go through my tree because now I... I really like my tree looks like the avatar tree. That's what I have in my head. Like I just think, oh my gosh, it's the avatar tree. And the roots were starting to die. And so what I did was I, I thought a, root, a, a tree doesn't die from the top or the leaves or the end of the branches. It actually dies from the roots. So I decided first and foremost to really come back into me and find out why I'm doing this what it is that that keeps me like ooh, coming forward and so I've done a lot of work for on myself and then I looked at my tree and in order to make those lights turn on like the avatar tree I went oh. I imagined my hair joining with their hair and how could I possibly bless them how nice. can I bless these people and and so I just ran around my tree looking for people to bless. And that, that made me like contact them. Hey, how are you going? What's going on? And I haven't talked to you in ages. Tell me about your oils. What's your favorite at the moment? And mm -hmm. then just started coming back to why I started in the first place. And so for the first time in a couple of years, there's a rumble. The roots are starting to come back. The branch is starting, like I can actually feel my tree alive again. And I'm actually excited. Like I'm excited. So that's, I hope love that, that answered. Yeah. No, I love it. Thanks, Trace. Hey, girls, uh, our time is coming up, but I've got a couple rapid fire, we've got a rapid fire session for you now. So a couple of quick questions, a couple of quick answers for both of you. So we'll start again once with you saying that. Uh, an interesting one, and might be an elephant in the room type question. Why network marketing? And why do you feel this is the space for you to be investing yourself right now? Yeah, that's a hard question, but... Look, I think network marketing for me is something that I really never thought that I'd be doing. Um, definitely wasn't my intention. Um, in my head, I was, well, I used to be an emergency nurse. So for me, I just felt like that was going to be my life forever. You know, adrenaline, um, craziness. And the idea of building a network marketing business had, you know, never crossed my mind. So it was definitely not intentional, but I feel like until I really understood and accepted how lucky and blessed we are to be aligned with such an amazing company and that the products literally speak for themselves. And so I didn't feel like I was doing a business or I didn't feel like I was selling anything because it felt so natural to me to just share, um, share my experiences. And so knowing that that is now network marketing, I'm like, great, like how do I, you know, get better at this? How do I um, make those changes? And Tracy was saying she had to work on it herself. And I feel like that's exactly for, my, for me as well. Like that personal development is so important and so understanding that, for me to invest my time and energy is giving giving me that time freedom and that sounds so cliche but with my children um you know where they haven't had to um you know attend any childcare or anything like that um and I've been able to be present for them and so knowing that 
it can give me that that freedom and flexibility around my young children is is definitely um, valuable right now. Nice, nice. Thank you. And Tracy, your rapid fire yeah. answer to that same question: Why network marketing? And why anything? Now? Any anything I resist, I have to lean into. And I tell you what, best move I ever made, baby, uh, because network marketing has given me the opportunity. I choose how I spend my day where I spend my day, with who I spend my day. And that floats me to the moon. Like I, yeah, all the way. I'll never not do it. Love it. Oh, so good. Love that. Okay. Final rapid question. Um, becoming influential. What does influence mean to you and how would you define it? Zaina. Um, I would say influence to me means having the courage, integrity, unconditional love to lead, inspire others with transparency, authenticity and service. That's so beautiful. I love that. Tracy, becoming influential, what does influence mean to you? Uh, influence means to me, in order for me, if I be the best version of myself, it pretty much paves the way for everybody else around me to be themselves too. It's an invitation for everybody. So it's like a ripple effect. And I think it creates massive impact across the globe and shows people that you can be exactly who you are with no judgment, no attachments. And you can, oh my gosh. Yeah. You can do anything. Like you can actually do anything in this life. It's amazing. Opportunities everywhere. <laughs> I feel that so deeply. Tracy and Zainab, thank you so much for being with us here today and sharing generously for the benefit of all of our communities. It's been absolutely fantastic. I'm sure everybody would agree. Um, and so to all of those listening out there, thank you for tuning in to Becoming Influential, the chat show for modern marketers. Join us in the next episode where we talk about where your true fans are hiding, creating connection and community. Yay, love that. Okay. Thanks, <laughs> that now little, the fun bit. No, that was the yeah, fun. That was our little silent bit <laughs> at the end, everybody. So Awkward thanks silence for, at the end. <laughs> and hang, hang about, everyone. We haven't finished, right? So um, we're going to have some time now for some Q&A. We want to keep these to a sort of short, sharp 30 to 40-minute kind of uh, per episode thing because we're planning to package up the content and do something fun with it for you guys in the next sort of month or two. So um, whilst we haven't, um, we were not expecting and not planning to share recordings of this in the normal Zoom training and you go on the corporate call and you get a recording so you don't have to bother about turning up because it's going to be there anyway. Um, I know for sure and for certain that I give a, lift, a different level of myself when I show up live. When I turn up and I have the camera on, or if I go to a, an, event, an event, a convention, or whatever, a training or something, I get more from it because I'm giving more to it. I'm giving more attention, more energy, more effort. And we really want to encourage that this space, becoming influential is for that because you can't become influential after it already happened. As in, you can't become influential on the recording of your life. You've got to become influential in your life, live, right? You've got to happen in the moment. So I want, we want, I love the idea of this being something that is something that we are all present for. And, and the gifts that come from it are going to be something, I think, amazing that we can all unwrap. We're going to have some Q&A now. And um, for, so, guys, if you've got questions for Zainab and Tracy, um, they were amazing. And some awesome mic drop moments in there. I can see that um, Tracy is going to be famous already. I can see the quote already out there in the universe. Just be you and add oils. It's going to be a quote that's going to be ascribed to her forever. It might even be at a global convention one day. So hit, hit us up with your questions in the chat. Um, and we would love to be able to hear more from any of you or anything that you'd like to, to hear more from us on. Um, any feedback from you guys on, yeah, we want that on T-shirts. Great, Courtney. Um, any ideas of content that you'd like to cover? We've got uh, four episodes of this to come. Um, I'm thinking some people had some challenge with the passcode th thing, so we'll sharpen that up ready for next week. So um, if you registered already for the bundle of the first four weeks, the same Zoom link is going to apply. So this Zoom link is the one for the next three weeks. Um, same time, same channel. 
uh, whichever state that, or uh, country that you're in, and we're looking forward to seeing you all then. So let's hit us up with some questions or your thoughts. Don't be shy. Yeah, what are you brave enough? Yeah, who's brave enough to be them, to be you? And ask the question that's on your on your heart. I might even see if I can just And go you've to got it. a question, I reckon. I can see it in her face. <laughs> I'm going to unmute these. Okay, so shall I read one out? There's a question in the chat too. Yeah. yeah. So Tanya's just said, Zainab, the classes that you do for customers and builders, do you charge for them? No, so I um, everything that we do online for our customers are free. So perfect. I love the reciprocity you spoke about within that too. So you'll, you'll often be, there's going to be a generous... Um, advising I suppose with your zone of genius back towards their community as well which is just so wonderful that third party knowledge um, from a basic sales conversion rate as well is incredibly powerful but I do when I have asked um, other um, like uh, platforms I saw people on platforms on Instagram to do lives with me I do always ask them you know um, you know what's your rates for the hour um, because I obviously want to value their time and knowledge as well. Um, but no one's ever charged me. They're like, nope, you know, we're happy to go ahead with it. And, you know, we won't be charging for that. Okay, the questions are coming through hot now. So I think that's powerful also what Zainab said right there, because she's, she, she's valuing their professionalism right off the bat. And she's, she's saying, I see you and I understand you have value. Um, the reason they never charge is because once the interaction has happened, they see Zainab, they see her professionalism, they see she has value and they never need a charge for it. But the fact that you go to that right up the, off the bat and are open about that, I think is powerful. Um, what other questions we got in there, Al? Yes. So I just saw a great one. Uh, uh, there was, there was, so there, um, how, how do you walk into your fear space? That's from Deanne. Either Tracy or that, whoever feels to answer. The parts where you need. I to love it. <clears throat> uh, walking into your fear. I think it's 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 the moments. I think it's scary when you start doing it, but once you just like you do anything, once you've done it a couple of times and you see what's on the other side of that, it's so worth it. And so anytime I am so like I was petrified to come onto this. I was like I have. I've been physically so nervous. I'm going to tell you, I had half a beer before I came on because I just thought, and I have to, I can tell you that now because you're not recording, but I said to Cameron, I am so nervous. I'm just going to, I think I'm going to vomit. Um, and so this is, this to me was fear. And so what I did was I, I, I did have half a beer. That was about two hours before this, but I sat down and I put my hand on my heart and I closed down my eyes and I just connected in with myself and I just recognized fear is teaching us something and there's there's magic in the fear so in the darkness they hide treasure in the dark so if you walk into your fear you're going to uncover magic and and treasure and if you hide away from that you you won't ever see it so i feel like once you actually put your big girl pants on get your um your kids rollers you're stronger and braver roll them all over yourself and then just hand on your heart, close down your eyes and just allow yourself to go and walk into it. Mm. That's so beautiful. Um, I also, from a fear perspective, I feel like um, if it feels safe all the time, you're not growing. Like if you feel safe constantly, you're missing out on so much opportunity and that self-check is so important. Jodie Naylor has a great question actually. Um, and she says, following up and getting a wellness consult can be tricky when you don't have a personal relationship. What are your tactics for gaining that new member's call? And I'm going to add to the end of that, if that is something that you do, and if not, what does that look like to you? Great question. Yeah, so with a lot of, I'd say 99% of my enrolments, um, I don't know who they are. So I just get the email and say, you know, new, new customer. So it's kind of a bit tricky because obviously I know that it's through Instagram and they've just kind of followed the steps or maybe I've had a conversation, but I don't know um, or I can't remember, you know. And so I feel like for me, it's that initial, I always send them a text like, hey, I just saw that you purchased your oils. Like, can't wait for you to get them. Uh, let me know when they arrive. 
And so that's the first point of call. And then I also add them to my email series. Um, so then they're getting, you know, the welcome email, the links to the private Instagram and Facebook groups. Um, and so I keep track if they've joined them or not. And if they haven't, then I, you know, I check in either by text or by email. So I don't leave them alone and not in a pushy way, but I know that I can open up a text and forget. So I'll always just, you know, even if it's a couple of weeks later, oh, has your oils arrived? And they'll say, oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot to text you. So this is what I mean about it takes a bit longer to create that connection, um, but I just need to stay on top of it. And then I always give them that option, hey, let's get on a, you know, a quick um, call and go over any questions that you may have. So I keep it really simple. Um, and a lot of people, I would say, because I attract a lot of young mums, they don't jump onto calls, to be honest. Um, and if they do, it's really quick. Otherwise, I am, you know, drip feeding the information by email um, and constantly educating, you know, on Insta Lives in the private community on Facebook. And I also have a personal WhatsApp group for my personal enrolments as well. Fantastic. Nice. Yeah, great. I love that. And I think it's such an important uh, thing. And guys, we've actually got an episode coming up that we're going to be drilling right down deep with some amazing uh, guests we've got for it who've got some really innovative and special content to share with you on exactly that subject matter of getting people to become customers forever, not customers for one time. Okay, so we're going to be dealing with that in the future. Got a question here from Katerina. How do you balance giving all of yourself all of the time? I guess this is for you, Dana, too, really, I suppose. The online space almost feels like you have to be available 24-7 to be successful. Is that true? No, I feel like um, people think that you have to be online 24-7, but really you're just giving snippets, snippets of your day. So I'm just conscious of it. So um, I don't plan what I'm going to, you know, post or anything like that. Like I just keep it real. If my like today my son mixed all the Play-Doh that I brought him this morning and all the colours. And so like it's just keeping it real and relevant. Um, and I don't open messages and inboxes, you know, late at night. Um, so you have to put those boundaries in place. At the start, I'd be like, oh, they ask you a question, quick, answer it, answer it. But then you get burnt out. So you just put those boundaries in and, you know, make the times that you are going to consciously go in and answer DMs. And also if you automate it, like for me, I have it in my highlights, the steps to follow to get an enrollment kit. I don't even have a website. So I keep the steps there, simple, go here, this is the kit. And I talk about the kits every now and then. So they are already having that education over weeks, months. And then when they're ready, they just go off and do it themselves. That's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing. I feel like I've just scrolled up and down the chat box for the questions and then I leave them alone and then come back to them. So um, Tracy, I'm going to ask you a question here. Uh, when you first started your doTERRA business, did people around you support you? And if not, how did you deal with that? Is the door closed? <laughs> 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 as long as they're still living there this is a good sign oh, they're still with me um uh look at the beginning uh it was like everybody just bagged me out because I was doing like oh god she's like a Tupperware lady now she's doing oils uh so you know and I just thought oh you know what get over yourself and I would have my first class a second class third class and my friends would be out the back having a drink and I'd be in there teaching and I'd hear them laughing and snuffling and carrying on like pork chops. They're all using oils now, you know, haha. But the biggest one of all was my husband. <laughs> uh, in the beginning, no, not at all. Then when he saw that I accidentally made three and a half thousand dollars when I wasn't doing network marketing, all of a sudden his ears pricked up. And he decided, yes, this is something we can do. He came to a convention. He was hooked. He absolutely loved doTERRA. He saw Dr. Hill speak and he was obsessed. Because I've been in, I've been in the same sort of space for about three, four years now, now he's lost belief. And so I... I am up against that. Yes, but I've heard it all before. Yes, you said that this was going to happen. Yes, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? And I just know in my heart it will happen. And so I just now have to just block that noise out 
and I, I love him where he is and I love all his fear because I just keep saying to him, honey, you are going to be so excited <laughs> when this pays off, you're going to go, oh, it actually didn't take that long. And I said, you met me as a hairdresser for 35 years. I've been a hairdresser. I can only create so much impact and so much money standing behind a chair cutting hair. Even if this takes me 20 years, I would never get paid or have the impact that I'm having with doTERRA in hairdressing ever. If I did it for 100 years, I wouldn't. So I, I just, it's really about how I've managed it is to rep, get really strong in my sense of self and what it is that I am wanting to do. And I just go, you know what, honey, I see you. I love you from here, but I'm not stopping. That's really powerful. Okay. So powerful. Um, I'm thinking about this from the guy's perspective, right? <laughs> the husband's perspective um, who's in this space. But um, uh, I love that so much, Tracy, because I'll tell you one of the things that got me to come into doTERRA is my wife with a vision that would not be shifted. And, um, you know, that, so if that gives you any level of confidence at all, um, that, le that level of strength, that being you that you talked about and what Zainab talked about earlier, that your value system and knowing who you are and belief in self um, is just something to hold on to in this particular time. And we call this um, show becoming influential, right? Um, and all about the modern market and, and the right now. And what could be more valuable right now than having a sense of self and believing in yourself? And uh, yeah, love those answers. What are the questions do we have there, Al? Um, there was one there that I really loved from Bernie. And uh, the question was, or she, the, the text says, one of the things I struggle with is telling my customers I have business goals and need that and need. Let's shift to desire or mm. want or would love. Um, their support to achieve them. Any hints, please? Zainab, what do you think about this one? Do you share your business goals and, and new levels that you're striving for? And how do you invite people along with that if you do? Um, no, I don't share anything business related at all in my customer groups or anything, even on my social platforms at all. Um, I think that if I focus on that, then it's just, it's, it's pointless for me. So for me, I feel like instead of focusing on the rank or instead of focusing on the specific business goals, I just need to keep reminding myself how in order to get there, I need to do this, this, and this. And it always comes back down to nurturing relationships, showing up and, you know, that ongoing education. So I focus on those core activities. And then with that, the business goals come and you achieve them along the way but if you're not doing those core activities then none of those goals will be achieved mm. when you do when you do uh achieve a new let's rank which is what it is in doTERRA which is it's i you know i look back and it's an incredible achievement it really is it's not just about particularly once you get you know, um, to the level where you are now, it's not just about enrollments, it's about structure and understanding the business. And it's about helping lead leaders, which takes a new level of skill that can, you know, can be one of the biggest challenges, I think, for women who are maybe working in an autonomous role for themselves. Um, do you celebrate your successes with your leaders in that? Yes. So when it comes to leaders, it's definitely um, it's a huge connection and, you know, inspiring each other. So um, I feel like, you know, for me, one of my languages of love is gift giving. So, you know, even any type of achievement, you know, when they're enrolling um, during the GROW program, Diamond Club, hitting their own ranks, like it's, I think it's um, no matter what rank it is, it's definitely something to be celebrated. So sharing that in our, you know, our private zooms um in the, in the business zooms in our in our groups as well and making it known um you know to the to our wider community in that business structure group as to what they've achieved and um yeah i think that's really important yeah i love that because i know that they would all want you to achieve great things as well yeah definitely and i feel like with 
higher ranks, like you can only do so much on your own. And so really understanding that you need to be able to work together. And the only time that um, is I won't, you know, be open with our customers, but with our leaders, I think the hardest thing for me was being open and vulnerable that, you know what, this is my goals, um, but I need to hear what your goals are because I was in some mindsets where I was basically just judging that they had those goals or just assuming that they wanted those goals but it was really me wanting them and so I had to really find out what their goals were and meet them where they're at so then that way it was really clear and open that okay you know she wants to go a little slower well no this one's like you know powerhouse and wants to go fast so let's meet them where they're at and that changed things for me too because it was also where I could then focus my time and energy as well and then it's not disappointing if someone doesn't achieve their goal because that's what they wanted to achieve mm. yeah nice. so important meg's got a really quick and simple question here i love what do you do when you feel stuck anyone can answer go for it uh what i've learned to do compared to what i used to do are two different things <laughs> And I, if I can give you one bit of advice that Tracy has now adopted is to reach out and to ask for help and to actually allow the help to come in. I never used to um, speak to my upline. I had nothing to do with account managers. I didn't have anything to do with anybody. I thought I had this all together. And because I was that strong, powerful woman, um, and so I never let it in. Oh my goodness. Once I opened that floodgate, I cannot believe the support that is available to us in this business. Like I have people like helping me from cross line, upline, downline, customers, account managers, like people from over. It is absolutely insane what you can receive when you allow yourself to receive it. So if you're stuck, the way out is to get moving and if you or to believe in yourself or to be courageous and if you can't do any of that right now because you're stuck borrow it from somebody else borrow some courage yeah can I actually piggyback that and say the leaders that you want to help you through your stuckness are not the ones that are going to be happy sitting there listening to you complain about being stuck and not moving they're the ones who will sit beside you and they will empathize with you while you explain that you feel stuck. And then they're also going to be like, and what, where are we going from here? And those are the people that you want to sit beside. And there are tens of thousands of them in doTERRA in Australia. There really is. And they're not at, you know, they may not be at Prezi rank or Diamond rank or they might be executives and they might just have the, that type of um that personality, that type of belief. It's powerful. Success definitely loves motion, right? It doesn't like stagnancy. You know, it's not, um, they're, they're kind of mutually exclusive concepts. So um, I love that, Tracy, you know, creating motion, move. Like, you know, what 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 can I do differently? What Who can I reach out to? What, what can I change? Um, and a final one here, I think, we, before we finish up is from Adi, what, uh, would you always recommend a similar starter kit or do you really tailor it to the person you're talking to? I, I, I work a lot one-on-one -on -one with people, so I am very targeted. So I, I, I don't just go for starter kits. Um, my enrolments come from what it is that that person's specifically being challenged with. I even make up my own, but I also, if I'm going to go to one, I go to the top 10 because then I say to people, it's like a paint palette. You can create so much with that paint palette and we can do that on a physical, an emotional, a mental and a spiritual. And I even teach empaths how to work with the top 10. So if we're looking at really getting into it, then we go into that starter kit. But other than that, I do definitely go to what that person I tailor it. I imagine your you have the majority of your starter packs. Sorry, Zainab, the majority of your enrolments would come with one of the standard kits. Yeah, so I I mean occasionally we'll enroll with the um, membership and specific oils. 
but I would probably say like 99% would be starter ca- uh, kits. And uh, generally it's uh, the home essentials, nature solutions, or the emotional wellness. Um, so yeah, I generally focus on those. So interesting, both of those answers, and I didn't know what they were gonna say. Um, and when I hear people saying, people don't want the top 10 oils or, you know, or let's get some more, just kind of, let's kind of change all this up. Um, it is really interesting how, just how they really do hit the spot so much still. And I find that in some of the things that Vanessa and I are doing as well, um, they still, uh, people go, yeah, that one, that mm. makes sense for me. Yeah, I think as well, the question on top of that, because I think I, it was interesting. I knew, it, I, I didn't know what the answer would be, but I knew what the answer would be based on how these women have presented themselves and answered these questions so far tonight and the way that they build community. And Zainab is major, uh, primarily online. We have Tracy who is in person, which alludes to that one-on-one targeted interaction. And I resonate as well with Zainab being online and having that ability to traverse so much ground with kits that cover you know, every body system and physical, emotional, spiritual, and environmental support. And so the question is not like, what do you do? It's how do you best work in your zone of genius when you're connecting with people in your life? How do you, and not just how do you want to, because some people will make it safe and shy away, but how are you going to choose to connect to people and gather community within your experience? And that's going to end up, uh, that's going to mean that your answer comes organically. It may not be one of these or it could be Tracy's or it could be Zane Apps. It's just going to depend on how you're, you're working with community. Yep. Um, I think we're kind of uh, at the end of our hour together. Um, Tracy and uh, Zane Apps, thanks again for all of your amazing input tonight. You guys were fantastic. And I can tell there's a lot of love for you in the chat. So if you haven't read that, you will have a quick scan before, uh, before this call finishes. Um, We've learned a, uh, a really good and valuable lesson today on today's call. The Zoom link had the passcode, not the wait list. We'll change that. So tell your peeps for next week. We're going to make it easier for them to get on and find the link. So um, we live and learn as we go always. And um, this is what happens when you collaborate. And have a whole definitely thing. the smartest doTERRA wellness advocates because you, you got here by finding the link and the passcode. Yeah, it was a test so, to see. If congratulations. <laughs> Um, so we look forward to seeing you same time same channel next week and we've got some amazing guests next week I think we have uh, Sarah Gordon and Hayley Weesey coming on to share some amazing info as well so uh, yeah can't wait to see you guys next week thanks for attending share widely amongst your teams we hope you felt that this was um, valuable for you and that it hit the spot for you hearing from these amazing women so um, yeah thank you so much for all attending and can't wait to see you guys next week thank you everyone that was amazing thanks Anna thank you Thank you. Thanks, guys.